here today with Jeremy Kling of the absence uh, in human condition for like 27 other bands, X venom. Um, so Jeremy, I'm just going to, I'm going to start with saying thanks. I appreciate you taking time to, to come hang out with me and chat. I know you keep a super, super tight schedule. So yeah, man, thanks for having me. Thank you. Hell yeah. Um, so the absence you were just telling me you get, you got something going on. Yeah. A uh, new record comes out in like three days from now. So I don't know when this is going up. Maybe today, maybe, maybe two years from now. And then still just look retroactively dumb. So. Probably about two weeks. All right, cool. Well, <laughs> the record has just come out. Wow. <laughs> uh, anyways, a uh, new record out. It's just called the self-titled album. So there's no title um, artwork by Dan Goldsworthy. That is just, Man, I love that guy so much. I shot him like a kind of maybe idea of what I wanted to look like. And what he sketched and sent back was not at all what we were talking about. Not at all. And it was like, hey, I just kind of ran in this direction. Let me know before I go too far. I don't know. I just, something pulled me to it. And it was like, oh my God. Yes. Originally, it was just a shirt design we were going to have him do. And we were going to do something else for the album cover. And uh, he just did that. And it was like, oh, my God, that's the record. That's the album cover. I was like, there we go. And then we just uh, firmed it up from there. But working with that dude is such a pleasure, such a treat. I mean, he's like just the consummate professional. Also has an incredibly stacked uh, schedule. <laughs> so it's like getting us all in is pretty, you know, interesting. But yeah, that was good. So that new record, uh, I love it, man. I think it's great. It's my favorite thing that we've put out. I know that every band, whenever they got a new album coming out, they're like, ah, this is my favorite stuff. But truly, of the new material that we've released, uh, we've done, now this will be our third record with the, uh, we call it the Mark II lineup. Um, with that lineup, it's great, man. That's like my favorite. Absolutely. This thing wasn't even supposed to be. So fans, I mean, like we kind of had the, did coffinized and had the had the band on a nice shelf and it was like okay we're all good like cool we're we're at rest and then taylor just some like worm crawled out of the ground here in florida worked its way up his shed into his house and then worked its way right into his ear and he just was like ah i wrote a new absence song and it was like oh okay cool wow so that was uh i think that was the silent eye that was the first thing he wrote that was our first single that we released on this album cycle which is and, fucking, uh, which is pretty damn good thank you that was so that was like offering one that he like handed over and we were like whoa are we doing what is this right and then he's like boom two more songs three more songs he was just like started churning them out and then within like i think like a week and a half something small like that all of the music was written as far as like arrangements and everything. Wow. And it was like so super inspiring to where I was like, I have to play drums on this immediately. Like I like stood up and was like, I have to play drums on this immediately. You know? So I just uh, was like, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. The rigs here. I'm like fired up. Let's do it. Um, let's go. And then bam, that was the most fun that I've had playing since riders. It was like my headspace was in a similar zone that I was in when we were doing riders. It was kind of like, cool it was real cool it was all like you know spontaneity and uh you know all that stuff that we give a shit about oh, yeah <laughs> like kind of like the flow of the you know the flow of the uh the circle you know how it just gets going and it's like that's the that's the creative fun part you know right there all the so rest I, of the stuff is interesting any, any plans for for the absence to hit the road um no we kicked around the idea of about doing a home show uh maybe doing maybe doing like a little three show but i don't know all of our schedules are so difficult it's kind of like i don't know <laughs> I mean, yeah that would be fun yeah you know it's like next to everything else it's all so fun you know so you're kind of like you know, no maybe but it's it's not a no so that's that but There's if that. schedules can align yeah. so hell yeah um i'm you know i i talk about this a lot i'm such a big uh inhuman condition fan i've got oh, i've you. probably got mul i've got multiple copies of every fucking album you guys got and cd and oh, vinyl awesome. and like i love the shit out of it um and i know you guys Thank just you. toured with uh vader and origin how yeah. did how did that go uh that tour was incredible man that was uh it was 
just incredible from start to finish. Like day one. So normally, like if you don't know, but like if you're a touring musician, it kind of gets to like day three to five when things start to like really feel like, OK, we got a we got a game plan. We got a system every day for the load in. We got a this. We got a that. We got a, you know, it kind of like seats in on like three to three to five. This was day one. It was like everyone was pro. It was all pro. It all went up. It all was easy. It all worked. It was all good. And it did not let up from that. That day one was already like we were in it. Um, now, Inhuman had two shows on the uh, 70,000 tons of metal. We had that first. Um, so we had two days jump on like jamming, you know, but uh, I don't know, man. Day one was like so, so good. It was already just awesome. And then the crowd response was, I, I don't know, man. It was like actually blew me away. Like I didn't expect. I didn't expect the tour to do as well as it was considering there were so many other tours out um, kind of like, like minded stuff. There was so much other stuff happening and uh, it was just a surprise every night. Every night was a surprise. Like, well, wow. Like, the okay. Whole, the whole bill is stacked. And I, I know, um, you know, you guys have been, you know, IC has really been pumping out music, right? You guys are what? Three, mm -hmm. three albums. So two full lengths and a EP, yeah. right? Two and a half. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and with, I feel like with each album, right. There's more rumbling about the band, which is, you know, of course I'm, you know, older, right. A little older. So we grew up mm. with, with death and, and all that old shit. And yeah. This is right in that vein. So it, it's, you know, for me, it's like comfortable and like, Oh yeah, I can fucking dig this all the time. Fuck. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, you know that was that was it. That was the, the the reason why we wrote this band was to be that, to be that, you know. So it was it was supposed to be that. The reason why we wrote the band is what I said. But I mean, the reason why we wrote the music, which uh, eventually made up the band, I guess is the the right way to say it. But it was just uh, a culmination of really just Taylor and I are like crazy people. <laughs> we're yes. just like crazy. We're crazy people, man. You know, we just uh love we love music we love what we do and we're students of it and fans of it you know i mean i can show you my deicide and cannibal corpse and sepultura posters on my wall as well you know like yeah. much like yourself i could see behind yeah. you i see a set list i see you know you know yeah got, cannibal corpse here i got battle cross over here oh awesome like, Heck yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 i got uh you know i took you around it's same stuff same stuff. Set list from uh, Alice and Jane's over there. You know, one that, like, that was a cool story. My brother and I drove up. Uh, Taylor and I, we drove up to uh, Atlanta from Tampa, which is where we're from, and drove up there. Watched Alice and Jane's play. After the gig, I'm like, we we're walking away, and I'm look on the ground, and I see an airplane, and I'm like, a little paper airplane. I'm like, that's weird. I don't know why I picked it up. I picked it up. The sound guy must have made an airplane took the set list and just whipped it, chucked it out into the public. And no it must have just, it. no one grabbed it. It was just sitting on the ground. And I ha and I happened to just go like, what, 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 an airplane, right? So I'm like, this is weird enough. So I picked it up and then I'm like, oh my God, it's a set list. Dude, it gave me like that feeling, that same feeling you got when you were like 16 and you caught, uh, you know, uh, a horse drumstick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're like, oh my God, I got <laughs> I got Paul Berserkowitz drumstick. I got one of those from like uh, some show I saw him in. And I had a Steve one because I went and seen Deicide in 97 in Tampa here. And I'm like, oh, uh, you know, cool shit like that, you know, that's <laughs> music. So we're like students of all of that. Right. So especially the obviously the Tampa death metal scene, you know, it's, it's fucking inescapable when you live here. But, you know, yeah. Well, I feel like anytime you guys don't have anything going on, there's a new project coming out, you know, mm. like there's yeah, yeah. Like so many projects. Yeah. So we got, uh, we, we already started uh breaking way on maybe IC three, but maybe, I don't know. We'll see. Right. <laughs> we'll see where we go with that. Right on. Well, yeah. I'm here for it. So Killer. Oh, yeah. whatever. Um, I was going to ask you a question about, about ic but i don't remember where that was going okay all right 
out the window. Mm. Boom. All right. So what, you know, all your projects are fun. Is there a project that you really dig working on more than anything else? Uh, no, for me, it's really equal. Um, I really, I, I just love music. I mean, I just love music. Uh, I love it. It's been my entire life, my entire life. And when I say that, I mean, my father wrote in my, I have a baby book. It's really, you know, cute, full of like stuff. Like there's like little stuff like at 18 months, you know, what or at, uh, you know, at six months there, you know, he wore this, you know, it was like one of those things. And at, at 18 months, my dad had written in there, uh, gave Jer a set of drumsticks. He jammed along with the entire Paranoid album from Black Sabbath. Okay, so I mean, this has literally been my entire life. I, music is all. It's all and everything and always has been, um, which is pretty amazing. So I just love like anything to do with it, really. So like uh, when I was a, when we, well, when we were younger, like the absence, we had dreams of like, oh, I just want to play Vakken or just want to play Hellfest or just want to get there and do this and do that thing. And, you know, we have these like milestones. Um, since, uh, you know, I did both, I did both crewing and I played drums and I kind of stopped doing front of house and I started jamming with Venom more. And in that time, three years, we had done all of the big festivals. So I did them. Cool. You know, yeah. and it's like, what it's like that scene in Fight Club when it's like, well, I called my old man. I was like, well, now what, dad? You know, and I'm like, <laughs> what? Now what? You know, um, fast forward to, I didn't do front of house. And then some friends of mine were like, um, Carlos Cruz in particular from Warbringer was like, hey, will you come out and do front of house for us? And I was like, oh, man, I haven't done it in a while. I'd love to. I don't know if my schedule is a workout. Schedule permitted. It worked out. I got to go. And. Okay, so at this point, it'd been three years. I hadn't done any front of house stuff, no crewing, nothing like that. And about to roll the intro for the band. And while the intro is playing, I get the same feeling that comes over me when I get whenever I'm about to roll the intro and go play on stage. So it was at that moment that I realized that, like, oh, it's just being involved in music. It's just it's being here, being a part of this. Like when you're doing front of house, it's amazing. You know, you're in control of a sound system. You, you are the vessel for which people hear their favorite band or they hear a new band. It's yeah. such an important job. Right. So I realized that it was just like, wow. I was like, okay, so it's really just being involved in music and, and doing it. So all of the stuff kind of hits me equally. I don't really have a favorite anything i mean i i like parts of the absence i like parts of inhuman it's fun to do all of it because music is just music is cool you know and then like I, it's especially cool to do these side projects because you get to get out these little things that are like i mean i could have never made the absence let's just say i could have never made the absence be a skate pop punk band could have never did that right i could have but it would have been some swan dive. I would have alienated these people. These people would have hated these people. There would have been some struggle forever. Like no one would have been friends. And it's like, or I can just make a new band, you know, and whip it out. And if people listen to it, cool. If not, then also cool. It's not for them. It's really for me and my brother. It's really right. just, it's for me. It's like a creative release because I want to hear or I want to do. And I just happen to, get to share it with people which that's pretty cool too totally yeah different thing but <laughs> the yeah. fact that people listen is yeah. awesome you know it's <laughs> like fuck well, yeah all right cool well yeah. that's you know growing up you're always like i just want i I want to be in a band i want people to listen to my band and now you're you're in that position right where you're mm. you're out there you're you're doing all the things right and like shit i feel like you've hit a almost every position on a tour at this point you know i think the only mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. i haven't seen you do is play guitar or bass mm. you know on yeah. stage like yep certainly well, could though but we'll see i'm sure it'll happen because i don't know you know why uh, why not i live a why not i'm like well that sounds like fun or that sounds like a challenge like i mean i'm putting in shakers today in this one song and i need a to particularly get the egg shaker to go in the right tempo. I mean, it took me like a while to understand the physicality and the movement of it. And it's like, 
not easy, but that pushes you to do something. And that's kind of cool because I've never done that. So why not? Let's see. Let's Hell see yeah. if I like that, you know, or let's see how that goes because that's cool. <laughs> you know, why not? Why not? It's musical. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so you were a part of the most recent Deicide album, right? Did you produce? Uh, well, officially in the uh, in the paperwork, no, it doesn't say that. Um, but I did a I did a fair amount of production with uh within that um engineering for sure so i engineered the entire new record okay um so but they uh, deicide was really amazing and they left any of like the um the production end of it which i would also consider that to be producing uh the production end of it they left that all to taylor and i so we 100 percent just you know did what we did got the takes we did we went about it the way we did it you know we we the mic selection like all of that stuff um a couple things here and there where it might have been like oh let's you know let's do this or let's go this avenue you know all of it was all like reciprocated it was a pretty great working environment actually uh the fellows in deicide were like oh my god this was so smooth and it was like heck yeah that that's all that we like i mean because it's like we like it to be easy, stress free, thumbs up. Like, yeah, that was fucking great. You know, cool. Like, yep. it was a good time. It was a a good experience because that's again making a record. I don't know. Some people like the drama and the chaos and shit like that. And they're like, we're making a record, and it's uh, and it's like, I'd much rather just have a good time. You know, just right. Just enjoy it and walk away with memories and. Yeah, I think everyone just. I mean, I prefer just have a good time. Like all that drama, fuck that. Life's too short. Yeah. 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 So this, this scenario was killer. So engineering, um, and that was, you know, I could have never as a 15 year old boy imagined that my, uh, name would be in a deicide record with engineering credits. I mean, get out of here. Like right. I couldn't have even, you, I couldn't have even fathomed that idea. I couldn't have even, I didn't even know what the fuck that was. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have even like imagined that. I'm like, no way. You know? So, uh, Yet here we are. I mean, when I was in like high school science, uh, ninth grade, I used to draw the trifiction on all of my folders always. Like it was just a, such an easy design to draw. And like, I'm not necessarily like the best artist uh, in when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, illustrations. Um, but I could draw that, man. I could draw the shit out of that. I fucking love drawing that. That was on everything, you know. So it's a bit of sigil magic which is kind of like what happened with that Slipknot thing. So what I was doing was the reason why I posted that was uh, sigil magic. I wanted to bring it to me. So if you actually broke down what I wrote, uh, it said drumming is a matter of timing, which I had just quit Venom. So drumming is a, oh shoot, sorry. I pushed the wrong button here. <laughs> I hope I, uh... did you lose me at all? Nah, no. like you, you blinked for okay. a second, but you're good. Okay. Um, drumming is a matter of timing um invite the chaos uh, oh bring it to you invite the chaos that's what i wrote right cool it was up for like five minutes and my buddy dirk from uh megadeth gave me a call and was like dude congrats and i'm like no that's not what that was i'm like oh no 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 it was just meant to be like a sigil magic like bring it to you like put it out there that hey i want to I want to dance like give me a give me a shot at the time give me a shot at the title champ you know i'm here uh cool took it down whatever uh that was on a friday monday morning uh i was already back home from uh, Me uh i was mega but uh mexico i was down in mexico i was back home monday morning my wife and i went to the some county building and i get a message and was like have you seen this right and then uh i opened it up and it's that video that tank had made saying that he was pretty certain that i was the drummer and then man man it literally turned into like tmz around it was like oh i'm sure it was it was wild bro i mean it was a it was a fun little two weeks i'm not gonna lie it was like really 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 a lot of fun and uh that's when i was like well uh sure i mean hell yeah i'm 666 i was like i just left venom i was like come on how more satanic do you get than that right. and then also i had gotten a drum i had gotten a 7 by 13 from my drum company i was like i'm gonna have a joey jordanson size snare drum so i made that extra post saying like there you go i'm 666 let's go i'm game and then 
boy, because that got news, Corey got upset and then like made a public post that I'm like, damn, dude. I was like, you know, Corey Taylor just like fired me from a band that I was never even in. I'm like, publicly, I was like, damn, <laughs> fucking damn. All right. If at the end of the day, nothing else, I'm like, that shit's fucking funny. I'm like, cool. Right on. Cool. Hello, sir. <laughs> right. Well, hopefully it, it brought some more people to some of your other bands to buy some of that yeah, merch. Yeah. So yeah. fucking whatever. It, it, it did, man. It was cool. I mean, it wasn't it not at all what I had intended with it. But again, there was like sigil magic. I brought I think I really I'm I'm a firm believer in that stuff. I think that that stuff is true. Um, that's what I say about deicide. I mean, I'm fairly certain that it was brought to me because of, you know, I you draw something, you you, you give it material, you like you rub a materialized thing, a version of it and you like think about it. You put your time and energy into it. And it comes to you. I mean, I'm living proof. <laughs> I'm fucking living hard work too. I mean, I'm I'm crazy, and I always say all the time that like my my energy level and my thought process about everything is broken in the on position. It's not broken in the off position to where I can't get motivated. Like I can't not be motivated. I'm like, I just can't not be motivated. It's not who I am in my core. So I don't know. No, How do just, I do it all? I'm, I'm just, it's, I'm wired this way. I'm just fucking wired this way. Just nonstop, right? Like you're always, mm -mm. you're always going. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I wouldn't even know what it would be like to just be in one band and not like do anything. I wouldn't. <laughs> I'm going crazy. Like, this is kind of boring. Come on guys. Yeah. We gotta, let's, let's do something. Um, yeah. I would probably always do something, you know, just because I can't sit there. I can't sit still. So. So with, with DSI's, uh, getting going on tour are you doing front of house for that oh yeah yep all right yep so everything that they have coming up i'll be at doing um so up next we have the philly fest and then we have the uh philly the decibel philly fest and then we have the uh milwaukee metal fest and then europe but that's in july so. yeah we, so in between that... there um no home so I'm saying we're kind of already, we're already kind of writing stuff. So, well, you guys will be in my neck of the woods, uh, May nineteenth. Uh huh. Okay, gotcha. Playing, uh, I think you're playing headliners. Yeah, we got the a uh, couple shows on the way back, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Or maybe on the way there or something like that. Yeah, that'll be fun. Headliners a cool little place. They've kind of changed the back of house a little bit, but it's always, uh, it's always a good time. I mean, I think cool. D Deicide's been there. I don't know, a dozen times or something. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you know how it goes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, out, out with those guys, it's going to be, it's going to be great, man. Uh, I love working for them. I mean, I'm again, I'm just like a huge deicide fan. So the fact that I get to mix this stuff is also killer. You know, I mean, I'm like, I get to hear it the way that I, I'd like to hear it live, which man, it's like such a, such an incredible honor you know to be able to yeah have that be in that position and then right. you know flip flop back and forth you know like sing here play drums here you know do that it's like fucking cool man yeah no rest for cool. the wicked well and so taylor I, like taylor's new to dsi but he's been mm -hmm. two years now something like that yeah he's already been in two years golly huh how fucking good for you guys man kicking that <laughs> keep kicking ass oh, uh, yeah thanks man so you know aside from the few things that we've already talked about do you have plans over the next 12 months with uh let's say in human condition like hey i really want to hit these these metrics or it's just kind of come as it comes it's a little come as it comes but uh it's very difficult with um it's just again difficult with scheduling because you know three of us are just so goddamn busy yeah. Uh, Terry being the most busy. So um, it's just difficult. But uh, we do have a Puerto Rican show coming up. That is June 28th or 29th. I think it's 28th. June 28th, we play in Puerto Rico. Uh, that should be a rager, man. That should be a big rager. We're stoked and looking forward to that one. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, I'd love to do some other touring. We were talking about maybe Mexico. We were going to maybe do one at the beginning of June, but uh, last minute, uh, Obituary had booked a few shows after their Monomark tour. 
and that was right in that little time frame where we were going to jump in there and do something in Mexico. Sorry, Mexico. I've been trying, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's just scheduling, you know, but I mean, that's okay. That's cool. When we get to wherever we're getting, we're, it's going to be, uh, that'll be the time, you know, and that'll be what it is. And I think it'll be, I think it'd be awesome. I think a lot of people are very receptive to that band and they, they just like it. And if they haven't heard it, they enjoy it. You know, it's something that they can take away. So they can take something away from the show because we're all very much just ourselves and, you know, having a good time. I think a lot of people do enjoy it. Right. Like every time I, every time I talk to someone that's, you know, that's seen the band, they're like, man, they're so fucking good live. They're such a good band. I'm like, hell yeah. yeah. That's yeah. good shit. That, and that, that's all we could hope for just because we're we're up there being musicians and doing what we do. And that's loving the fuck out of the music. <laughs> <laughs> loving the fuck out of it. Especially Florida. I mean, come on, look at outside. There it is. Can't I can't get away from it, you know? Yeah. I wouldn't want to, but I can't get away from it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's fucking nice out here right now, too. I think we're about 70. Okay, killer. Hell yeah. Sunshine. Nice. And I'm like, thank you. It's been like yeah. 20, 30. Fuck brutal yeah. yeah it it's been great for us so <laughs> i bet of course that's where i'm like well i mean you know i always say this all the time and like people are like oh i love up north and i'm like well this came from Babyface. he's a uh, cannibal corpse's guitar tech but he would always uh, say well i never get tired of shoveling sunshine and i'm like man that's the best thing to say when someone's on a gripe about some you're like well, i mean yeah. i never i never get tired of shoveling sunshine down here and they're like yeah well well, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep trying to get my wife to move south. I'm like, come on, let's go south. She's like, the kids got to graduate. I'm like, all right, I, yes, that, ma'am. All right, you got it. We'll yeah. make it happen. All right, cool. So, with you know, on the engineering side and doing front of house, where where did that all start and where did that come from? Uh, well, uh, I started doing monitors, and then I was doing front of house locally. Um, and I got asked to do front of house on tour and I had like minimal experience and I understand the concept of it. And I had at that point already owned a studio and worked exclusively in a studio for, I think it was like six years at the time, maybe seven years. So I applied all of my studio learnings and learn, it's just a system and then you just have to learn and understand the comprehension of signal flow and so once you understand that, then you can, you know, then you can mix. Now there's like do's and don'ts, which you learn those by, you know, working, asking questions. And then, so I just started doing monitors and then I did front of house and then I was just like hooked. I'm like, wow, I love this. This is killer. I mean, I did drum teching for years. I drum tech for about uh, three years, maybe four years. And then that eventually led me into doing monitors. So, because there was like a need for somebody to do monitors and my drum teching job. So, it kind of like really was like, hey, do you want a couple, you want an extra, you know, X a night? And it's like, yeah, I'm here. My, just... my, may as well learn. And yeah, and like, might as well do that. So, then there you go. It just goes All from right. there and you gain experience. And then there you go. I just started doing for now. And, uh, you know, it kind of like, I remember like Nick Barker used to do crewing and stuff like that. He would like show up on tours and it was like, oh my God, what's he doing? <laughs> Holy shit. What's he doing? Right a house? Or he used to like drive for bands. It was kind of cool. Like there's, there's some of those guys who are out there doing that, but not, not many, really not many. Yeah. But, uh, when you got a passion for it, it's like, it, it's almost like it just doesn't stop. You know, you've got to mm. always be doing something. For me, that's the way it is. Um, you know, I, I mean, this is how I've supported all my children, you know, it's music. And, uh, I didn't do that by just writing one record and, or two records and just only accepting what that, uh, brought to me. Um, cause some do that and they expect that the one, I mean, it might not happen the way that you're hoping it, you know, the, this game doesn't work the way that you kind of hope it does. It just works the way it works. So for me, I needed to, it was a born necessity and we all have to work. So I just dug my head in, in the studio then. And then if I didn't have anything here, then I like, if I didn't have anything in the studio and a tour came up, I took that. 
And then if I took that, then I came home and I buried myself in the studio again and just worked and worked and consecutively, consistently worked. And, you know, I mean, maybe it looks easy because we did that one a day and we like could like pump out a song in one day and do all that stuff. But that was like almost two decades leading up to that of like uh, work, work. skill set, you know, the ability, uh, you know, knowing your musicianship knowing your knowing your level knowing what you're capable of and kind of all just all kind of jutted in that direction well that's you know it goes back to what you were saying earlier about you you give it the energy and the time and mm -hmm. you you go at it and it, eventually it it turns into something it'll almost always turn into something as long as you don't stop you know we got to say we hope. So. <laughs> that's that's fair. It might not turn into what you want it to, but it'll turn into something. No, it'll turn into something. Because right now, let me tell you, I'm. Uh, it life is more than great. Life is more than great. It's like here's the level, the bar of great. I mean, it's like you can't even see it. It's out of the frame. It's past that. So it, but it's nothing like what I dreamt it was going to be. None of it. I mean, it had like a similar shape, like the bones were there, but like. The rest of it is like something so totally different, which is cool. And if you can't get a, if you can't get on with that, then you know maybe that irks the shit out of you, and then maybe that causes you to get disenfranchised or whatever. But for me, I'm like, well, I mean, my children have to eat, and uh, show me the way to the next rock, you know, whatever it is. What right. what's next? You know, what's next? Yeah, well, and it helps that you you know that you really enjoy just being around it too right like mm -hmm. that's yeah. i think there's yeah, a, lot, yeah, yeah. a lot of people out there that uh, they always want to do something and they don't know they don't really know where to start or how to get there and they let that yeah. uh be the deterrent you know well i don't know i'll just go and yeah yeah i uh again my my thought process there was broken in the on position so uh it was always like it was just very clear cut for me that just move move and over there then we're going there I'm like okay like i said when taylor played that uh that new absence record when he when he played like just a couple songs i'm like i have to i literally was like okay i have to fucking record these drums immediately i was like oh my god my mind was like all lit up and i'm like okay did i have the time to do that then no was it right in between a shitload of other tours that i did like two summers ago in europe what because uh last year i toured seven months out of the year the year before that i toured seven months out of the year so i had like finite amount i had like a week and a half and i'm like i played the drums in eight hours i wrote the entire record in eight hours i was done i had it recorded i was done i was like boom it like boom came out of me done and i'm like jesus i need a cigarette you know <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool you know because it was like it was that it's that it's that like it's all of that and if i so I just like feed into that and I have the ability to feed into that because that's like, that's how I have everything set up. And that took me many years of delivering pizza. You know, no one sees that, you know, like the, you know, I have the the shady side, you know, <laughs> stuff that I did with, well, really, realistically, that was just pre um, the awareness that we have with Facebook. So that part, that portion of my life was just happened to me but i probably would have posted like pizza oven you know pictures and shit yeah. like that you know because I, I had to work it in and out of those joints ever uh since i was 20 you know so i mean i worked pizza jobs for till like 26 something like that well really from like 18 until like 26 so i mean i had a uh, like i made my wife garlic knots uh homemade last night you know she's like i didn't know you could do this and i'm like years of training miyagi <laughs> apparently there's years a lot of yeah there, there's a lot that goes into being a musician and making pizzas has got to be part of that right oh you know it was hell yeah uh that that old joke of uh how do you get a musician off your front porch uh pay him for the pizza yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure bummer <laughs> 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 but I mean, but it's kind of like true because like those jobs would allow you to like come and go, you know, or you could like you, it was a little bit more of a transient position. And, you know, if you were a good pizza maker, whatever, then you could have a go you could have a job. I worked at one place for like three years. I mean, I just worked there making pizza. Hell Part yeah. of it, you know, 
And but the, everything that I built has now set me up like uh, everything that I built has got me to this point to where now if I have now I can just play music and I can I can create and I can do that stuff. You know, but that's like years of years of progress. We're seeing like level how old am I? Forty one. We're seeing level forty one right now. So <laughs> yeah. I, like I give that analogy happens. to my kids, my kids all the time. I'm like, Yeah, I'm like, I, I'm giving you information. You have an item box, but until you're like level twenty five, you can't that you're just gonna have that item in your item box, but it won't illuminate for you to use until that point. But once it does illuminate, you'll be like, oh, man, thank fuck for that knowledge, you know. Awesome, you know. So. So are you a gamer, too? Like, lightly. Okay. Lightly, I am. Uh, I wouldn't consider myself, like, you know, I wouldn't consider myself, like, a gamer, per se. But I definitely get down on some longer sagas. And uh, for me, it was, like, Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy IX. Like, I'm actually playing Final Fantasy IX right now and just... So I'll like get into stuff like that. I mean, I play some modern stuff as well. Like my son and I were played uh that uh what the hell is that new one? Thor Ragnarok, the uh what's that? I can't remember. No nope. drawing a blank. Yeah, we're uh we just ripped on that and it was like killer, you know, just awesome. I like Diablo, uh, but I'm not I'm not like a get the new thing gotta play it like i'm not a gamer like that i don't have enough time to be so super dedicated right. like that but yeah i guess i do i like some video games for sure diablo was my you know i love the shit out of diablo and it's awesome dude. oh yeah taylor and i played the crap out of two and we played the crap out of three. Oh man great game great I've, game i had to, i found a i found a copy of one for the place for playstation one oh uh, cool at some store. So I bought it and I was like, shit, I need a system to find it. So I had to go hunt to find a system so I could actually uh -huh. play it. Yeah. 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 Not played awesome. it now for six or seven years, but I'm like, now I'm like, shit, maybe I need to break that out and like just play for an hour or something. Man, I tell you what, I've just bought this thing. It's called a, um, it's a little handheld sucker. A little, uh, it looks like a game boy. It's about that big. It has a three, three and a half inch screen, something like that. And it's loaded with 5,000 games and uh, it's an emulator, it's a ROM emulator thing. So it does a uh, PlayStation one Genesis, uh, pretty much everything. And then you can dump your own stuff in it. So that's why I actually, on this last tour, I bought one of those and I downloaded final fantasy nine and I started playing it in my bunk. It was great. It was great. And then you can, uh, you can also connect it HDMI to your TV and play it full screen on your TV. So oh, shit, that's get cool. one of those. 65 bucks you're done you're portable and then you can have diablo one if it's playstation there you go you can download it for that you know <laughs> that's well that's cool thanks for the tip i'll have to look into yeah. that yeah no, you're welcome uh so out of all your years of touring um is there like a memory or an experience that really stands out to you like man this is this is the moment that i've been you know hunting for uh you know i had a few of those happen to me I had a few of those happen, really like pinnacle moments. Like I got the jam Dead Embryonic Cells with Sepultura on stage at Soundcheck. You know, that was a kind of like, what the fuck? How do we get here? Um, I played my band. Uh, so I played the absence for uh, the guys in Arch Enemy wanted to hear. Um, they were like, what What band are you in? And I said, I'm in the absence. They're like, we'd love to hear it. And I'm like, oh, okay. So sure. And then like, I was like, oh, we'd love to hear it. Cool. And then like like a day or so happened and we were stopping at Walmart and like and then Mike's like, Yeah, I'd like to hear your band. I'm like, Oh, really? I'm like he's like, Yeah, put it on. Literally, we're all sitting in the front row lounge because we're all going in. So it's Daniel, the Jeff, the Jeff Loomis, of course, and Daniel mm -hmm. Orlanson and Charlie. Where well, they're all just sitting there. And I'm like, I'm just I'm a crew guy, you know, I'm just like a drum tech for Daniel, which is pretty sick gig i did uh monitors and drum tech for arch enemy and um ah, man i was like uh all right sure so i put it on and then like the first song like nobody really talked writers of the plague nobody really said anything they were like oh, oh my god second song started and they were like holy shit mike looks at me is like this sounds swedish and i'm like yeah uh we liked all that we liked all that stuff, <laughs> right? You know, whatever. 
he's like, wow, this is like really great, you know, whatever. And everyone was like, oh my God, this is like really great. And we do it. It made it all the way up to song uh, five. So world divides. It was all the way up to that. It was like, huh? Okay. Then we got to Walmart and like, they were just all like, wow, this is like great. Well, cool. Uh, Jeff and Mike walked off. Uh, they went, they went towards Walmart and I took a diagonal approach. And by the time they did like a right angle and I did a diagonal, we both met at the front door and Jeff was like out. Mike and I were just talking. We didn't realize that your band was so amazing. Like, I mean, like not for like nothing, like the band is actually amazing. Like those songs were fucking killer. I'm like, whoa. Wow. Okay. It was one of those moments. And I go into the deodorant aisle and Daniel's there, which one of my favorite drummers as a young, like young guy, like listening to, I mean, I don't know. I, I love Florida death metal. I also really love Swedish death metal. I'm like a big fan, big fan of, well, I mean, the list is ridiculous, but at any rate, Daniel's in one of the top drummer lists because, I mean, for obvious reasons, you know, him, yeah. Henry Ranta from uh, uh, Soil Work and, yeah, so uh, Stefan from uh, Carnal Forge. I mean, like, the list of guys is like, I got a tight little list of four to five up there and Dan's there and he was like, Jeremy, he's like, holy shit dude, your band is so good. He's like, dude, you could actually just play the fucking drums for the rest of the tour. Of course, he was just joking, but he was like, wow. He's like, you're a fucking great drummer. And I'm like, wow. You know, it was like, after that, after like, I had that moment, I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, this is it. Because I mean, for like the Arch Enemy was a massive reason that the Absence was even a band. Like, I mean, 25%, you know? Yeah. And it was maybe amongst the band because the the original core five of us um we that was a mutual band for all five of us it wasn't like you know sometimes you have one guy that oh he's the jazz guy and he doesn't like any of that shit or he only yeah. likes gore guts the uh, later records you know whatever that's very common but arch enemy was like a 100 percent of all of us all loved that band and it was crazy it was like oh my god you know holy shit it was like one of those, one of those damn moments. So, hell yeah, yeah that was kind of like it was kind of like defining for me. I was, you know, and then you know, call your dad. Now what? You know, yeah. what's next? You know, <laughs> yeah, those things happen all the time. You know, those things happen all the time. You know, too, so much so now that, uh, so much so, it just sounds like you're bragging if you just talk about like your Tuesday. You know, even though your Tuesday isn't meant to be a brag, but I mean, some cool shit fucking happened on Tuesday. You know, just just as a byproduct of the environment. But yeah, that was a, that was a good, that was a good one for me. It's great. What cool shit happens. Mm, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, that could be on a shirt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that's the next, uh, inhuman condition shirt, you know, inhuman condition. It's great when great shit happens. It, it's great when cool shit happens. Oh, there yeah, you that's it. Yeah. Uh, um, so you said you, you, I know we're probably not going to dig too deep into it, but you said you sh you're kind of maybe starting on the the number three full length for IC. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because we're we're home and again broken in the on position. And it's like fresh off that tour. That tour felt great and it was very inspirational. Um, inspirational on many different fields and fronts, and so it's kind of we were kind of just like. Ah, maybe we should jam on that. It was like, yes. Was like, okay, perfect. And then it's just kind of like, you know, we're crazy. My brother's in the middle of mixing a record for a band um, from Chicago. So he's currently mixing that slash writing slash rehearsing for Deicide slash, you know, crazy. <laughs> it's like, I feel like you guys don't ever sleep, you know, it's, you just no. go. Yeah, no, not much, not much. He, I, he actually doesn't get too good to sleep, but you know, Neither here nor there. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's hilarious. Um, all right. Well, Jeremy, I I I know you've you've got to go and and get back to recording and and take care of some mm -hmm. stuff for the album coming out. Um, so I don't yep. want to keep you a whole lot. I greatly appreciate you hanging out and chatting. Um, it's always good seeing you. I guess I'll I'll catch you when you guys are in um, uh, Louisville in May. Cool. Good to see you, brother. All Thanks right. for having me. Looking forward to uh seeing you though. Up there in Louisville. I know it's Looks, not that. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, dude. Literally, when you get here, just call it Louisville, and everyone will be like, what the fuck? Oh.